Morning guys, today's uh, chain rule day two. Um, I know I did a couple of these problems in the video yesterday, so if you want to fast forward through them, if not, we'll be through them in a minute. But the chain rule, technically, if y is a differential function of u, and u is a differentiable function of x, then the derivative dy, derivative of y in terms of x, is going to equal my first function, the derivative of y in terms of u, okay, times my derivative of function u in terms of x, and then as I see this comes through, my du, my du's get rid of each other, and I end up with dy dx, so I get my derivative in terms of x. Don't like it that way as much. I do like it in function form better, to where I have f of g of x, and to find that derivative, we take the derivative of the outer function, where f is my outside function, I leave the inside function in it, and then I chain rule and take the derivative of my inside function. That's the chain rule. Derivative of the outside, leaving the inside in it. Outer function, leave the inner function in it. And then derivative of the inner function. So we have here the cosine of what? What is the derivative of cosine of something? Well, y prime is going to equal my outer function is f, my inner function is g. So what is the derivative of cosine something? Well, that's going to be negative sine of that same something times the derivative of my something, which would be 2x. Notice how I left that little space right there. So I could get efficient, and I could just slip it in there and say negative 2x times sine x, and I can get my equation all, derivative all said and done right away. The next one, don't get all wigged out. Remember, here's my inner function g, here's my outer function f, and don't get freaked out on this pi over 2. That's constant. Okay, that's just a number. So I need to know what's the derivative of sine of something. And the chain rule is used every time our something is more than x. Okay, so y prime is going to equal the derivative of sine of something is my cosine of that same something times the derivative of the something. Well, the derivative of pi over 2 is 0. The derivative of negative 3x is negative 3 times my cosine, and that is my chain rule. Woohoo! And then we move on. Okay, what's the derivative of tangent something? Well, y prime is going to be my outer function, my inner function. I'm always taking f prime and leaving g in it. So the derivative of tangent is secant squared of that something. Okay, times the derivative of my something, well, 2 times 7, that'd be 14x times secant squared x. And notice how I'm leaving that little space, because efficiency, rather than saying secant squared something times my something, to where I have to rearrange in front to get my actual simplified answer, I'm just leaving a little space for it sometimes to get it done in there, okay? Then we move along to number four, okay? Number four, I'm, again, I'm looking at my derivatives of a composite function. There's g, and there's f is my square root. So for me, I'm kind of a simpleton with this. I really like to see my exponents, and I know a square root is a one-half. So what I do is I say, okay, uh, something, what's the derivative of something to the half power? Well, my derivative is going to be one half my something. One half minus one gives me negative one half times the derivative of my something, which is three. Okay, now here I look at this because we got to simplify this up a little bit. I like to say, hey, negative exponents, I see fractions. And I also like to see this as 3x minus 7. A lot of people leave the 1 half here. I can see that 3 is in the numerator, that half, that 2 is in the denominator. So some people like their answer this way. And for me, when my function's a half, when my exponent's a half, or a third, or maybe a fourth, a lot of times I prefer to see that as its root, which would be 2, 
and it's a half, so it's a square root 3x minus 7. So some people like that. Just so you know, they are both completely acceptable. I just do not want to leave my negative exponents. Those need to go away. Uh, wrong direction there. And the next one is number 5. Well, don't get all wicked out at number 5. Now I'm just taking a constant times that. So I think of this as y prime equals. This is 4 times the derivative of something to the third. So rather than make it hard, I like to take my third down to my 4, call it 12 something, drop my power 1, times the derivative of my something, which would be uh, 6x, and then I got to put things together, so y prime is going to equal 6x times 12, that's 72x times 3x squared minus 5 squared, okay? And no, I don't want to expand that and multiply that, because if I'm looking for my flats, I can see x equals 0, and I can see x equals both positive and negative 5 square root of 5 thirds, okay? But there is my derivative. We'll be looking for zeros and flats soon enough, okay? And then I'm going to come on to number 6. Well, number 6, okay, what I can do if I want, I can use because it's a quotient. Some people like the quotient rule. I really do not. But if I use the quotient rule, I would say, Derivative of the top times the bottom, 5x plus 2, minus the derivative of the bottom is 5, times the top is 3, all over the bottom squared. And then, of course, i got to simplify that. y prime equals, well, those go away. That gives me negative 15 over 5x plus 2 quantity squared, okay? So you can use the quotient rule if you want, or you can redefine your function and use the power rule. That's, for me, that's what I like. I'd say y equals, well, I see that as to the first power in the denominator, so I can call that 3 times 5x plus 2. Let's just raise it to the negative 1 because we moved it. We take it and we move it up to get rid of our fraction. My exponent just goes negative. So here, now I'm going to say y prime is... Negative 1 times 3 gives me negative 3. 5x plus 2. Negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. Times the derivative of my inside function is 5. And then I can kind of see here, y prime, I see a negative exponent. So I just slip and slide that dirty little scoundrel to the bottom. And I say negative 3 times 5. Oh, that's in the numerator. And that is usually the way I prefer it, okay? And I do some mental math, and sometimes I go from right to there to there. I mean, you kind of see how things go, but it just depends on what you're comfortable with, and not saying avoid this at all costs, because you have to know it, okay? Now, number seven. Number seven's not any different, but I don't like taking derivatives of cubed roots like that, I would prefer to redefine my function as 3x squared minus 5x. And a cubed root, remember, that whole quantity under the root is to the first power. Roots of trees go in the denominator, okay? So that's a third. I would, re I would rewrite my function as that, so I can use my power rule and say my derivative is, okay, one-third something, and then one third minus one, that gives me negative two thirds. Then I got to take the derivative of my something in there. Ooh, this one's got a little bit more. That's going to be six x minus five. Okay. Now from there, I'm going to clean this up just a bit. Okay. All my calculus is done. Okay. That is all the calculus involved in this problem. I just took the derivative. All I had to do is apply the chain rule. That's easy. Where it gets to people is simplifying. And I look at this, I'm like, oh, negative exponent, you now go in the denominator, and your exponent's positive. I see that is in the numerator, because it's 6x minus 5. 
and that one goes in the numerator and the three goes in the denominator. Now notice, I cannot fact, there's a parenthesis around that guy, see how I had it there? And I can't reduce the three and the six because I would have to factor a three out of the six and the five to reduce at the bottom. And that's a skanky little three there. So you could leave your answer like that, which is how I typically would when my uh, exponent, when my fractional exponents get a little bit bigger like that. Or you could say it's 6x minus 5 over 3. And now remember, fractional exponents, they're roots, where the denominator goes in the saddle, and I get a 3x squared minus 5x. Now remember, that whole entire thing is squared, and it's under the root. So I could go either way here. I personally prefer that but they are equivalent and you need to see both of them, okay? Next one, don't get all freaked out on this one either, okay? This is, what is the derivative of five sine something plus six? So I have a constant, I have an outer function, I have an inner function, and I have another constant, okay? Well, that's not that bad, okay? So I know because I have a composition I'm taking y prime is going to equal my constant times derivative of my sine something is going to be cosine of that something, pi over 10 times x minus 3, okay, times the derivative of my something. Well, just so you know, look at that little guy as pi over 10 x minus 3 pi over 10, and if you picture it like this in your head, you know the derivative of this is going to be pi over 10, because that goes away there, that's a constant, and then it's plus, derivative of 6 is 0, so I don't even have to write that plus 0 because my constants go away. Now I just got to clean it up, and whoa, I need my writing utensil, y prime equals, well what the heck is 5 times pi over 10? Well, that would be 5 pi over 10, which would be pi over 2 times the cosine of my pi over 10 times x minus 3. Remember I said in our, in our um, uh, harmonic motion problems, anytime we're translated up or down, our first derivative, that translation's going away on my derivative, so it's gone, and I'm just looking right here. Okay? Now we got number number 9. And we're almost done for the day, guys. I'm really hammering this one out quick and just letting you get some practice. I would highly recommend you hit pause, try to do these last couple problems, and go from there. But how I would do this, okay, is I could try to use the quotient rule. I wouldn't, but if I did use the quotient rule, I would say y prime equals derivative of the top is 0 times the bottom, which is the square root of 5x minus 7 minus the derivative of the bottom. Oh boy, I need to see this 5x minus 7 to the 1 half power. So the derivative of the bottom, oh my goodness, it's 1 half, the derivative of 1 half something. Whoa's up. So it's 1 half my something times the derivative of my something times 5 times the top function yet, which is 6, all over my bottom squared. Okay, there it is. My calculus is done. But now the hard part is simplifying and staying straight through here. Well, I know that's gone. I do know I have a fraction. I do know the square root of 5x minus 7 squared, hey, that's just 5x minus 7 in the denominator. And in the numerator, what I have is what's negative 2 times 6, that's negative 3 times 5. That gives me negative 15 times 5x minus 7. And let's not forget that was to the negative 1 half power. I just couldn't get it up there very well. So what I probably should do is I should drag all these guys. Oh. Boy, why didn't it take everything for me? I'm going to try that again. I'm going to try that again. See if I can get everything there. 
and drag it all down. No, I couldn't get it all, but I'll try take this. There we go. And I can see that goes out. And let me clean this back here. Ah, give me my stupid erase. And I'm going to get rid of that because I didn't write it decent enough here. And I didn't put my negative one half. I didn't drop my power a half over here after I brought it down. And then my chain rule there was a five, and that was a six. So that's where my half, time, negative half times six is negative three. That still gets multiplied by five. That's where my negative 15 comes from. But now I have a negative exponent yet, so I'm not done simplifying. Okay? And because I'm not done simplifying, I'm going to keep working at this thing. And that's really negative 15 over... Hey, that's 5x minus 7 to the 1 half now. And now I need to see, oh, that's really to the first power, 5x minus 7 to the first power. Now let me ask you, what is x to the first power times x to the second power? Well, heck, that's x to the 1 plus 2. That equals x to the third power. Because when we have common bases, we add exponents, right? Well, isn't that base the same as that base? Why, yes, it is. A 5x minus 7 is the same as a 5x minus 7. So this is going to give me negative 15 over my base of 5x minus 7. Well, what's 1 plus a half? Well, that's 1 and a half or 3 halves. That's my y prime. Ooh. Okay, again, it's not the calculus that's hard. It's the algebra that gets dicey. Now, I would never do this problem that way because I, like I said, I'm not a big quotient rule fan. It has its place. I need to use it. But what I would actually do is I would actually look at this first like this, 5x minus 7 to the 1 half power, and I would take that up top and I would redefine my function as 6 times 5x minus 7 to the negative one half power. So all I have to do is use the power rule with the chain rule. Because this is saying, what is the derivative of six something to the negative one half power? Well, all I gotta do is take my exponent times my coefficient, negative a half times six, that gives me negative three times my something, minus seven, my exponent negative a half minus one, Ooh, that gives me negative 3 halves times the derivative of my something, which is 5. Whoa, now I see I got another negative exponent here. So what I usually do is I say, okay, y prime equals, and I make my fraction, and I stuff that negative exponent where it goes, and I make it positive, and I can see, because this is really over 1, right? So that pushes down, and I see I got negative 3 times 5, negative 15. Okay. And I actually get to my answer a little bit faster, and it makes more sense, and it's easier with the power rule. Okay? So let's take a little gander at number 10. So what would I do with number 10? You guessed it. I would totally redefine this thing. I would not quotient rule. It's not a function of x over a function of x. It's a constant over a function of x. So it makes good sense to take this little scoundrel, Okay, and then let's just make that exponent negative because then it moves it to the numerator and I look at it like this. Then all I got to do is use my power rule. Negative 2 times negative 3. Well, y prime equals 6 something. Negative 2 minus 1. Oh, that gives me a negative 3. Derivative of something. Hmm, 4x because the 5 is a 0. Now, here I am. Remember, when I say a picture of fraction, right away I'm seeing here. I'm seeing a fraction, okay? And then y prime actually equals, and I put my fraction, I say, u with the negative exponent, you are getting moved to the bottom, and I see I still got a 4x and a 6. Oh, that would be a 24x in the top. And there is my derivative, okay? Last one we got here. Very last one. What is the derivative of 5 cosine something? Check it out. Notice this is going to be y prime is going to be 5 times cosine. Now, the derivative of cosine 
is negative sine of that same something, pi over 6, x minus 2. And I hope you're looking inside here, seeing your something is actually pi over 6, x minus pi over 3, which is a linear function, okay? Which means the derivative of the inside piece, which is what this is in a different form, is going to be times pi over 6. So all I need to do is kind of clean this up with my negative 5 and my pi over 6. My derivative y prime is negative 5 pi over 6 sine pi over 6 x minus 2. And there is my derivative. Yes, I do like the braces. I usually like to alternate braces from parentheses, okay? What do we got here in the next one? Multiple chains, multiple chains. Well, I'm not, whoa, I'm not going to do this multiple chain, but all I'm going to tell you is what we're looking at, and this is going to get tackled on Monday, and if you want to try to tackle it before Monday, that's fine, but this is really y equals, because the cosine is cubed, okay, it's really cosine 2x minus 7 cubed. I have three functions. I have a function in a function in a function, okay, where I see my f of x function actually is something to the third. See it? It's something to the third. That's my outermost function. Then when I come into the inside, oh, my g of x function, that is cosine something. Things up because there's something inside the cosine yet, which means I still have an h of x function, which is 2x minus 7. So what is this? This is in here, then they're both put in here, and what that does is that gives me a composition function inside a composition function. That's not really the way to say it, but it's a function in a function in a function. What the crap are you talking about? It's f of g of h of x. Because h of x is inside g. See? h of x is inside g. There it is. And then g of h of x is inside f. Because I took both of these. I took that cosine after I plugged that in there. I plug both of them in here, and I get a multiple chain rule, okay? And I got to keep my chain straight. So what do I do? I work my way from the outside to the inside, and I take my derivatives the same way I did with the chain rule. We will go over those on Monday. However, if you wish to work on some stuff, Feel free to work on any non-multiple chains in the, in the book, and we will get the rest of this done on Monday. Have a good night.